Good morning, family. How are you this morning? I pray you're doing well. I hope our sound is working just fine. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Booze. It's Reverend Valerie Love, and you're here. <laughs> that hand clap is for you because you showed up this morning, and I'm so grateful for you, for your presence on the planet. Did anyone tell you yet this morning you are loved, you are cherished, you are watched over from heaven, you are doted upon, you are absolutely the light of the world? And if no one told you that today, let me be the first. Let's go into a prayer, shall we? This morning, our prayer comes from. A Course in Miracles, as we do every morning, we join together in our daily spiritual practice for a moment of stillness and quiet silence, followed by a powerful prayer that carries us through the day. So today our prayer comes from today's lesson in A Course in Miracles. This is Relationship Thursday on Boost. Remember, tomorrow we'll be off. It's July 4th. And uh, I pray you enjoy your holiday weekend. I know I will. We're traveling. We're having a ball. And like good, always, always, always. And we'll be back on Monday morning, bright and early. Is Monday 7-7? Seven, seven? Let's see, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, we'll be back 7-7. Seven, seven. I love that. Powerful numbers. Let's hop on over to A Course in Miracles. And we're going to look at our prayer. Here's our prayer for today. So before we dive into our prayer, let us prepare minds and hearts for prayer. It is Lesson 184, the name of God is my inheritance. Let us go down to the prayer. It's at the bottom of the page. And before we offer our prayer, let's just enjoy a deep breath. Shall we? Let's just enjoy that. And as you draw on a deep breath, let yourself know and experience that you're really taking care of. Everything is good. Everything is working out perfectly. Expect that today will be a brilliant day, a wonderful day, a joyful day, a peaceful day, a day of prosperity and abundance. Expect it. Breathe in and have this delicious expectancy of delicious outcomes. Now breathe out anything that is fear, worry, woe, stress, desperation. Breathe that out. Breathe in the delicious expectance of delicious outcomes. Breathe in. Fill your lungs, fill your lungs, fill your lungs, fill your lungs. Breathe out worry, fear, stress, doubt. Let it go. Watch it escape your body. It simply escapes because you let it out. We ask the angels to transmute that energy. See the angels transmuting energy into something more useful and helpful for the entire universe. Now, go to the heart, out of the head, drop into your heart. Drop now from the head, drop all your attention to your heart. Drop into the heart, drop into your heart, just drop, just do a free fall into your heart. Don't worry, love will catch you. <sighs> now let the heart blossom open, 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 open. Come on, it's Relationship Thursday. Our relationships set us up to really see ourselves. Open your heart to love. Open your heart. Open your heart. And breathe. Remember your oneness with the divine. We're one with the one. One with the one. Sense your conscious connection. One with the one. I am one with the one. The Father and I are one. There is one power here. One presence. One life. One heart. One love. This one love is God. In all. Through all. As all. For all. Breathe. Connect. And our prayer, Father, our name is yours. In it, we are united with all living things. And you, who are their one creator. What we made and call by many different names is but a shadow we have tried to cast across your own reality. And we are glad and thankful we were wrong. 
all our mistakes we give to you, that we may be absolved from all effects our errors seem to have. And we accept the truth you give in place of every one of them. Your name is our salvation and escape from what we made. Your name unites us in the oneness which is our inheritance and peace. Amen. Breathe. Isn't that delicious? Isn't that delicious? Isn't that delicious? I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So I have a story to share with you on this Relationship Thursday. You know, uh, I got something up my sleeve here. <laughs> so this story comes from my relationship uh, when uh, I was married. And we were living in this uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful home. And it was uh, it was a tumultuous time in my relationship. There was a lot of drama going on. The relationship was coming to an end in the form and shape that it was in then. So there was a lot of drama, conflict. It was, ever been there in a relationship? Just drama and conflict going back and forth? That, that's where I was. And when you put conflict with drama together, we call it conflama. Not pretty. It is not cute. So here I am. That's the setting, the backdrop for this experience, this story I'm going to tell you. So we had at the time my daughter who just turned 24. Yay, happy birthday, Sarai. She just turned 24. At the time, she was about 15. And um, yeah, 15, 16, somewhere around there. And she had her cell phone. And uh, she was in her room. And she was talking on the phone. It was late at night. It was about 10, 10 something. So my husband, who, let me give you this piece of bit of information is not her biological father. So this was my second marriage. In my first marriage, I had two children. My second marriage, I have one. So this is not her biological father. And they always kind of clashed. They just always clashed. You know, in a blended family, you have a lot of work to do because there are different personalities. And in our family, I'll give you the family dynamic. It was myself and my two children from a prior marriage. And it was him and his one son from his first marriage. And we came together. So now you have five people coming together in the same household. Mm, that was that was um, interesting. And then we had a baby. So now we have a sixth person. Now you have all these different personalities, all these different dynamics. The baby is sort of the spoke in the whole wheel because she's the only one that's related to everybody in the puzzle. I got that early on when she first came in, that she was the only one related to everybody by blood. She was related to me. She was related to my husband, though my kids weren't related to my husband. She was related to her brother on her father's side, though my kids and her brother weren't related by blood. She was related um, to my kids, though my kids weren't related to. So it was, it was a, 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 a dynamic that had a lot of moving parts. That was the relationship that I was in, six of us in the same house. Ooh, that was tumultuous, tumultuous, especially because it didn't have to be. It didn't have to be. It could have been all peace and, and, and wonder and beauty. It wasn't because me and him were on two different pages. We were doing two different things on two different frequencies. And when you have the mother and the father misconnecting, the whole thing is going to go to hell in a handbasket real quick because there is no basis for peace harmony. There's no harmony in the home. Do you know what I'm talking about? Harmony in your home. Harmony is more important than balance. I've heard from, from one of my teachers. Harmony is really what you want to go for. Well, we didn't have blissful harmony uh, harmony in the home. We didn't have harmony in the relationship. There was conflict and drama, as I said. So one night, she's on the telephone, and uh, he yells from our bedroom where we are, you know, get off the phone. And uh, she wasn't listening. She was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. A few minutes later, she's still on the phone. You know, teenager. He yells again, get off the phone. She's still on the telephone. Oh, okay, okay. Eventually, he gets up, and I'm like, oh, oh. That's when he got up, got up with this anger and angst, like, oh, and that can never be good. And he's 
heading into the room so that he can, you know, see what's up with this telephone situation. You need to go to bed. You need to go to bed. And she was like, okay, chill. And she had attitude because, you know, she was a teenager and she was born with attitude. She had attitude when she was in my belly. So this child had attitude. She was like, you know, okay, whatever. I'll get off the phone. And he was like, what? And he came over to her to wrestle the phone. She was laying in the bed, you know, talking on the phone. He came over to her to wrestle the phone out of her hands. And they got into a scuffle, and me listening to the whole thing on bated breath from the other room, and I heard it degrade. By then, I jumped up and took off and ran into the room. Well, by the time I get into the room, there I see him scuffling with her over the bed, and my mama bear kicked in, <laughs> and I jumped on that man, and I started wrestling him to the floor <laughs> to get him off my child, right? I'm just like, ah, oh, what? Like, no, this is not happening. This is not happening. This is not happening. Because it was dark, I couldn't really see everything that was going on. It could have been a misunderstanding. It could have been I didn't really see what I saw. What I know is that I felt within my spirit that it was time for me to get him off of her and get him off of her immediately. And that's what I did. So I jumped up and I'm rustling with him and we fall to the floor and my daughter is screaming and carrying on and arms are flailing and legs are flailing and this is just a mess. We get, we're on the floor and the blankets are flying everywhere. And then my daughter jumps up and she's yelling and screaming. She's hysterical because she feels attacked. And she runs downstairs to the kitchen. Why, why, why does this child run downstairs to the kitchen? She runs downstairs to the kitchen and grabs her. We have a butcher block of knives on the kitchen counter. She, I don't know why people even keep those things around. To this day, I don't have knives in my house. If you can't cut it with a fork, <laughs> but then again, we don't eat meats and all that kind of stuff, so not a whole lot of use for a lot of knives. So we usually are more fork people, you know, salads and things like that. But anyway, she runs down. She gets this big knife out the butcher block, and she's just yelling. She's like, I will blah blah blah. I went blah, 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 blah. Now she's telling him this in his own house, right? And he is like, this child done lost her what little good sense she had. I know she is not talking to me like this. And I'm like, calm down, calm down. That's the Libra in me. I'm the diplomatic one. Calm down. I'm trying to be the mediator between the two. That's how I live practically that whole relationship, trying to be the mediator between my kids and him, my kids and him, because they hated him. And he, I don't know how he felt. Um, you know, I know what he told me and I know what I experienced. I can't speak for him. That's not the point. The point is, I was being this mediator. Can we just say that the whole thing was a ham? A hot a mess. It was a ham. And I'm telling you this on Relationship Thursday because when people tell me their relationship drama, I'm like, been there, done that. Do you see my t shirt? Let's take a breath. Now, what did I decide to do after that? Well, at the same time, <coughs> my daughter, who's 13 years old now, was about three or four then, and she was asleep in her room down the hall. Well, she woke up in all the comfort and screaming at my daughter downstairs now, yelling, touch me again, touch me again. She got her, her knife and whatnot. She has the knife, not even her knife. And it wakes up the little one. And the little one is the biological daughter of my husband. So he's all, you know, concerned and worried because his baby's up. You know, his baby is up. And it was not pretty. Well, in that whole dynamic, I felt the need then to make a change. I knew I was in a place where I had to make a change. I had to make a different choice. I had to do things differently because I wanted a different outcome. I, the outcome I wanted was peace in my home. I'm big on peace. Peace and harmony must be around. Every so often people can um, disagree. I don't have no problem with disagreements. Every so often people will have to have hard conversations. I don't have no problem with hard conversations. Every so often people will get heated. I don't have no problem with getting heated. Every so often people will get angry. I don't have no problem with us getting angry. What I do have a problem with is living in a house where there is constant conflama. I'm not living under those circumstances anywhere, anytime, no how. I don't care who you are. I don't care how fine you are. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how good the sex is. Let's just keep it real. That is not how I desire to live or desire to live. 
So I had to make a choice. I had to make a new choice. Maybe you can, can you feel me <laughs> on this? Can you feel what I'm talking about? This was a, a, a difficult, difficult, difficult situation, especially we, because we had been together for so many years by the time it was time for me to make this decision. But I said, I'm going to make a choice. So the next morning I got up. And um, after we finally all got to bed and calmed everybody down, had a conversation, had a long talk with my daughter, I got the baby, you know, settled and calm and back in uh, the little one, back in her room and back to sleep and, and dad calmed and, and whatnot, everybody, and then we fall asleep. Well, the next morning, I make the choice to finally end this relationship. That's the choice I make. And I decide I am going to move. I've been contemplating it for the longest. And my spirit had already told me I, when the baby was about six weeks old, the baby was about two months old, my spirit told me, be out. It was that simple. It was that clear. I received it. I remember where I was standing when I received that message. And I didn't listen. Once again, there was the act of violence in the house. And um, it, this time it was between him and my son. There was an altercation. And the altercation resulted in my door and my sister who was working for me, I was a financial planner with American Express. My sister was working for me in my home. And my sister, thank God, took my son with her and left the house and took him with her to her house. And that's where he stayed that night. And she told me he had choke marks around his neck and that there were marks on him. And I was just livid. And I remember where I was standing. I was standing, standing in the kitchen. And the voice said, be out. So clear, so simple, like a dawning, like an awakening on me. Like the reason that it said that was because we had fulfilled the reason for that relationship. The reason and the purpose of that relationship, it has a profound purpose. The purpose is was to bring my daughter into the world, our daughter. That was the divine purpose of the meeting and union. So bringing the daughter into the world, we had done that. Now, it wasn't for us to be lovers. That wasn't the, the purpose of that relationship for us to be lifetime lovers. The purpose of that relationship was for us to con to, to um, consciously carry her to the age of majority. That is the purpose of this relationship. And to support each other in healing and growth and being the best parents that we can be. So we are co-parents for our beautiful daughter. Well, um, we had already had the baby, so there was no need to still be in the love relationship aspect of things. Now you can come into your own home and you can co-parent together, start your journey now as co-parents, which is a, maybe even a higher calling than being lovers. The co-parenting, because with so much we've learned in this co-parenting journey that we've been on now for the past decade or so, that it's that this give and take, this um, dad is good at some things, mom is good at some things, and to... Um, understand each other and to listen to each other. We probably have a more connected, conscious, high-level relationship now than we ever had as lovers, ever. Maybe we just weren't able to tap into it because the lover stuff was in the way. Now we can. So um, I decided to be out. The next day, I took both my daughters and I went to the police department and I said, these are the papers we're going to fill out. These papers say you never touch me. These papers say there's a boundary around me that keeps me safe in your presence, that I know that you are not going to touch me. I do not agree with anyone touching a woman for any reason other than a love touch. I don't agree with spanking. And though I used to spank my first two, I do not at all adhere to it or agree to it after I sort of came to my awakening around 30. Hitting kids creates kids that hit. They think hitting solves a problem and we teach them violence when we hit. So we went to the police station, filled out an order of protection for my daughter and um, my husband. Now this was uh, a radical bold move for me because I never had an experience where I even had to do anything like that. And um, I never really concerned myself with it for me because whenever we got into anger, angry conversations, I exited the conversation because nobody's putting their hands on me. That is just not happening. It's not going down. And I come from a long line of very strong women that had pills and potions who would, as Nicki Minaj says, who would not have any problem with administering a pill or a potion or some kind of solution 
to any man that had any problem. I remember once my grandfather tried to, he raised his hand, he was in a drunken stupor, he raised his hand to my grandmother, and my grandmother was sitting in the kitchen looking at him like, oh, you got to be joking me. Hey, <laughs> so the <yellow> around. <laughs> How are you? And this is a profound conversation we're having about relationship on, on Relationship Thursday and some relationship drama. Ever been there? Relationship drama? I, I don't hear you. <laughs> the headphones again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I hear you now. I hear you now. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear yes. You. Yes. All I can say is yes to that. <laughs> we yes. know a little something about relationship drama. <laughs> it's particularly spicy, isn't it? It's particularly spicy, you know? Yes. So I was telling the story about how we, we had this fight in family in the house. And so, the next, yeah, yeah, we had a fight. And we got, I got an order of protection for my daughter. And it, I said I had a very powerful conversation with both of them. I told them never be in a relationship where there's even the inkling or thought or idea that anyone could at all put their hands up in your direction. Never, even, even, don't even hold me by my arm hard. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. We are very sensitive to anything. We have very strong boundaries that we hold, and it is a necessity for living. It is simply a safety necessity that there's a bubble of love around me and all my children, and nothing but love enters or escapes that bubble of love. So I think my daughters learned a really profound lesson because they saw me take action immediately and that it was not going to be tolerated, it was not going to be accepted, it was not going to be brushed away, it was going to be dealt with, and it was the, the boundary was fed, held firmly, enforced, and mm. end of story. So I guess it's a boundaries issue too. Any thoughts on that? Whew, well, uh, <laughs> I would like to learn about how to put boundaries there. Um, in a better way, um, I'm very like when things happen. All I want to do is forgive, and I want that, and I want to feel the love again between people. Um, but I know a necessary part of that is boundaries. Otherwise, nobody learns very much about how to treat each other. Mm -hmm. so, mm, yeah. Something I'm looking into right now: how to set boundaries better, how to tell, how to say that to people without causing another argument, and things like that. <laughs> sure. You know, the the big key for me was determining what was a boundary and what was a defense. Because sometimes I thought I was in a boundary and I was really in a defense. And sometimes it may look like a defense, but it's really a boundary. And defenses are a fear. Boundaries are love. So when we put up defenses, that's a fear of being attacked. And the Course teaches us about that all the time. It says that attack or defenses bring attack. So if we have a defense, you know, especially a defense like a wall around the heart. A lot of people have a wall around the heart from past broken relationships. If you have a wall around the heart, that is a defense. And that defense is going to invite attack because a defense means that you have an inner belief in attack. If we have a defense of, if there's a wall up, obviously we think that there's something outside us that is not safe that could get us. And that's fear based. On the other hand, boundaries are not from the, what defenses are from the outside in. Boundaries are from the inside out. They are simply a loving space around us in which we get to determine and we get to say what will and will not happen in that loving space around us. So in the loving space around me, there are no people who yell at me. That won't happen. There are no people who touch me in a, any kind of touch that's not love. There are no people who smoke around me. There are no people who come in my home with their shoes on. So there are these beautiful boundaries that emanate from the heart out. And if there's so much love in the heart for self, and we, we are so in touch with the love that is our very nature that this love sort of just emanates out in this beautiful bubble around us that causes this big, huge bubble of love, literally a bubble of love around us where fear is not welcome and where anything that is fear-based isn't welcome and where attack isn't welcome and where there's really no belief in attack. So that's not 
Am I being clear on the distinction? Yeah, well, I've just read your blog before I came. The blog post. <laughs> So um, yeah, about definitely there is a massive distinction, and it's quite obvious really between what is um, fear and defence, and um, which is always destructive, and mm. and then what is I like the way you're saying it um, with your arms as well, like this bubble. I can really feel the bubble of love, and that comes from within. And this is what I will have in my life, and what um, I I wish not to have in my life. I think as well. Um, a lot of energy work and things might be necessary um, to dispel defensiveness because if we've experienced something that's made us defensive we need to break that down and find a new perception and way of living um, yeah so that's something to work on I think um, for, for a lot of us <laughs> That's a huge one. And you know what, what really set me free from defenses? Because Sophie L. Aurora, I tell you, I come from Harlem, from the hood, yeah. where we have locks on every door. We have multiple locks on the door, multiple locks on the car, gates on the windows, locks on the gates, on the windows, and people still broke in. <laughs> All that stuff didn't work. I don't know. It summoned them. It summoned them. <laughs> right. It was calling them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> come get me because I'm so afraid that you might come get me. <laughs> Yeah. I am. Um, I actually live in the hood as well. Like I, I live um, in a very quiet space in the hood. I kind of, I might move sometime, but I'm quite comfortable here actually. And um, and I used to live in a very rough area though, in the hood, a very rough area. And as like I had an interest in role as Rainbow in that rough area. But anyway, one time I was asleep in my bed upstairs. And I It paused for a minute, Sophia. Are you still there? It froze for a moment. Okay, Sophia, I think you'll probably pop in and pop back. No. Uh, pop back. Uh, pop in and pop back out. I mean, pop out and pop back in. <laughs> um, so while we're waiting for Sophia Aurora to come back in, I want to wrap up. Oh, there we are. Okay, continue. Okay, now I can hear you. I didn't. I didn't. It, you went out for a minute. Am I in? Hello, can you hear me okay? Okay, 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 I hear you now. Continue. I think Google might be having a moment. <laughs> Every so often, Google has a moment. I think Google may be having a moment. I don't know. Uh, are you able to hear us? Can you can you hear? Can you respond? I don't hear you. It looks like your screen froze for a moment. Okay. Okay. Uh, while Sophie L. Aurora comes back in, let's put a pretty little bow on what we were talking about. When it came to that altercation in my home, the clear message, and I, I had the conversation with my husband too, that we were leaving, myself, my two daughters. Uh, at that time, my son had gone on to um, graduate. He wasn't living with us. His son used to come back and forth. Uh, but myself and my daughters, we were there all the time. And I made the clear distinction, I'm leaving. I'm done. I've had it. And that really took the relationship in a different direction. And it was really what I needed to do to get the outcome that I wanted. Ever since then, ever since then, I have had a peaceful home. Every home I have had, even people when they come into my home, they say, oh, it feels so good in here, it's so peaceful. Yes, that's important to me. Therefore, light the love boundary around yourself. There's a peace bubble boundary around my whole home. So people are not going to do anything strange there. I'll give you an example of uh, Maya Angelou. I heard Oprah Winfrey telling this story. She said they were all over to Maya Angelou's house, a few people at a dinner party. And Maya Angelou, several people there. 
And a lot of guests, you could say famous people, quote unquote famous people, that Oprah was there. And there was a person there that was getting that was getting ready to tell a racial joke. They started off telling this joke, and it was going to be a racial. It was a racial joke. And they say Maya Angelou. Oprah said she saw Maya Angelou come out of the kitchen, walk over to the person, and say, "Excuse me, is this your coat right here? Yes. Here you are. You're welcome to the door." And the person looked at her. They knew that she meant to leave the dinner party. This was in front of other guests where, where the person was telling this joke. The person got up. She saw the person to the door, closed the door, as she went back to doing her cooking or whatever she was doing in the kitchen. Oprah said she had never seen anything like that in her life. And she said people were sitting there like, what just happened? Did somebody just get kicked out of this party? Because of that. And Maya Angelou said, Oh no, I do not allow, you know, that delicious, deep, robust voice she had. I don't allow that in my home. It's a slur and it's energy and it gets into the fabric and the walls and the curtains and it lives there and it perpetuates. And I was like, Woo, that's it, Maya. She was not having it. Period. So if people are in bad behavior in your presence, if they're using language that you do not approve of, if or doesn't make you feel comfortable, or they are touching you in ways that don't don't make you feel comfortable, or you can't sleep, or you feel um, in any way uncomfortable, your inner sense will tell you that this is not a safe, good place for you to be. Just like my inner sense was telling me, be out. Okay. What does Kabbalah call that? Everything you do after you get the intuitive message, be out. It's called unnecessary process because all that drama and conflict that you keep going through, you don't have to go through it. If you don't want to, you're choosing it. You don't have to go through it if you don't want to because you already got the clear message in your spirit. Be out. Okay. Now, because I have power of choice from spirit, I can either choose to go with the inner uh, uh, understanding, the inner wisdom, follow it completely. And it will save my life. It will make my life so much easier. It will cause me to be peaceful and happy and harmonious and even closer to that which I truly desire. Or I could say, eh, I'll intellectualize my way out of the intuitive voice. Bad idea. And I'll go some other direction. Well, now when you go that other direction, you start meeting with problems and situations and circumstances that are not of the highest and best good for you and all the parties involved. Then you're all in unnecessary process and you got to get yourself all the way back to over here. Why not just do the thing in the first place that your inner spirit is telling you to do? Just follow that. Follow your inner guidance. Follow your inner guidance even when it doesn't make sense, even when you don't know why it's saying it, even when the person looks good on the outside. People look real good and slick and clean on the outside and down underneath they are absolute terrors. They are hellions. Get away from them. Your inner spirit is telling you, this is a hell you. Uh -uh. Your inner spirit might just be telling you, no, it might just be a repelling feeling that you get around somebody. But he's fine, or she's gorgeous, or she got a big booty. Big booties have gotten more people in trouble. I tell you the truth, more people have gotten in trouble over a big booty than <laughs> you can shake a stick at. So don't look at the outside. Keeping it real. Don't look at the outside. Follow your inner wisdom. Follow your inner wisdom. Lastly, um, I'm praying Sophia Aurora gets to come back. Lastly, I want to say this about defenses versus boundaries, because of course we, we were talking about those two. The other night, I was invited onto this show on Blog Talk Radio, M Ebony Empress. I'm going to go on screen share and I'm going to find it for us. And um, follow along with me real quick. We're going to go to um, Ebony, just Google Ebony Empress Blog Talk Radio, okay? So I was on the show the other day, Ebony Empress on Blog Talk Radio, first one that comes up. And on the show, we were talking about relationships. She's a relationship coach. There it is. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And um, here is the message right here, the, the one that I was on. See this one here? How to heal your broken heart. I'm actually going to put this link in the um, Facebook group. How to Heal Your Broken Heart. Okay, I'm not going to. Okay, there it is. I'm going to 
copy this link and I'm going to put it, uh, actually I'm going to put it on my Facebook page right now at Reverend Valerie Love. Um, you can watch me do it because it's that important that you have this, uh, it's that important that you have this, um, in, really that important. Okay, so it's posted to my Facebook fan page. This message could not be posted to this wall. Oh, you know why? Stop. Okay, let's close you. Okay, because I'm doing this as uh, Valerie Love, not Reverend Valerie Love. Okay, let me come over, leave this page, and I'm going to come over as Reverend Valerie Love. And I'm just going to post this here at the Reverend Valerie Love Facebook fan page because I really want you to be able to listen deeply and intently to this message. Okay, how to heal your broken heart. Okay, so. We were on that the other day. Oh, stay on this page. Okay, thank you. Post. All right. There we go. It's there for you. So go to Reverend Valerie Love on Facebook and go to that post. There it is right there. How to Heal Your Broken Heart. Spiritual Life, Spiritual Coach, Valerie Love. And that was on the Ebony Imprint show the other day. So here's, here's what we talked about. We were on for two hours, and it was dynamic, powerful conversation. We had lots of folks that called in interesting comments from, from listeners and questions about relationships and whatnot. Here is the big thing that came out of that. A person was saying that they were in an abusive relationship. So we had a lot of conversation around these abusive relationships, people in bad behavior, people who are doing things that you don't want them to do. Defenses versus boundaries. You get to say what goes on and does not go on in your life. You get to say what goes on and does not go on in your home. So anytime you're in your own home or you're in a relationship and you're trying to put it on the other person saying that they're in bad behavior or they're not doing what you want them to do or they're doing this to you or they're hurting me or they're doing this, stop it. That is none of your business what the other person is doing. What is your business and your only business is what you will do and not do, what you will allow and not allow. That is your business. The other person is not your business. You can't change that person. You can't correct that person. You can't tell that person what to do. My mother-in-law has this beautiful saying, you can't tell grown folks what to do. And she is this beautiful being of light with a ton of wisdom and a ton of gray hair to go with it. And I know every, every strand of gray hair standing on her head has a wisdom story to go along with it. And she says that all the time. You can't tell grown folks what to do. And it's true. Stop trying to tell grown folks what to do and stop trying to get your mate to do something so that you can feel better or you can feel more comfortable. If a person is in bad behavior, set up your boundary and you stand up and say what will and will not happen in your life. Now here's going to be the big problem on where it's going to get tested. You can't hold a boundary if you have unworthiness. If you have unworthiness issues, low self-esteem issues, low self-worth issues, you're going to have a challenge holding your boundary because you don't think you're worthy, you don't think you're, that you're, you don't value yourself. And so that low self-value, low self-worth, low self-esteem, those energies running around in the system will cause you to be weak on your boundaries. Somebody will say something, you'll just let them do it. You'll say, no, I'm serious. You better not do that. They'll keep doing it and you'll waffle. See, worth and value are energizing, integrating energies that cause you to stand in power. So worth, self-esteem, self-value, these work together for you to know that you are worthy and you are valuable and you are loved and you're not going to accept anything less than and that you are the rightful owner of your space. I grew up in New York City in Harlem like I like to talk about. And in New York City it seemed like there was no personal space. I didn't really get to know that there was this three foot personal space around every person until I came out of New York because when I was in New York City people were always crammed up on us especially because we rode the New York City subway every day. And right in the New York City subway every day, people are always in your personal space, just like right here, just all over. And you just get to cope with it, that people are just always up in your personal space. It wasn't until I moved to Maryland, I was in my own vehicle. We didn't really have cars. We didn't have a car growing up in New York. I didn't have a car probably until I was like 20-something years old in New York because it just wasn't necessary. And it was more of a pain than anything else because you got to move it from side to side and whatnot. And, and that's just, you don't, need a, you don't need a car really living in the city. Well, when we finally did get a car, 
it was amazing. Like, ooh, I've got to discover and explore this idea of personal space around me. Like, there's this three foot circle around me. It's this personal space. And then when I moved to Maryland and it was more spacious and spread out and it wasn't so crowded and, and people lived more in the suburbs and I started to really get this idea of the space and spaciousness. So that when I went back to New York and people were all up on top of me, I was like, hey, no, <laughs> that doesn't feel good. And I realized, wow, I was living with that all that time, putting up with it. I was conditioned to live that way because ever since we were little, we were stuffed it like sardines into the train. But that doesn't really feel good. And that's not really natural. It's natural to have some space and room and breathing space and that feels good. It's very self affirming So anyway, let's wrap up this conversation. The important thing that I want you to take away from is this. Develop self-love within yourself, boo. Let yourself be loved from the inside. Let yourself be loved from the inside. You feel this love emanating from your heart. You feel this love that you are. You feel your nature is love. Let yourself be loved from the inside. So, Biel, tell us your story before we wrap up. Oh, it was just about um, when I left my door open in this rough area and there was like lots of people available to rob my house because I actually knew many robbers and um, like, I have to, I have to. <laughs> uh, and, um, and I thought to myself, I was lying in bed and I was like, the door's open. And instead of being worried, I thought to myself, well, what if someone comes in and tidies the house and does the dishes <laughs> and then leaves while I'm asleep? I was like, this could be good. Because I couldn't be bothered to go back downstairs to, to sort it all out, so that's what I did, yeah. <laughs> Nobody turned up to do that, but I didn't get robbed either. <laughs> I was getting ready to ask, did somebody come in and clean the house while you were asleep? That would be lovely, right? Oh, that would be lovely. Because that, that, that's a good point. We always assume that somebody's going to come in and we're ex expecting the worst. Well, what if somebody was just coming in to clean your house or leave you flowers or leave you money? Oh, lovely. Yeah? <laughs> Sophia, did you freeze up again? Okay. Okay, I think it's frozen again. At any rate, we're going to conclude, and this is what I want to conclude with. I want to take us over to the blog, and I want to give you a gift. And this gift is free, 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 free free of charge. Let's close out a Reverend Valerie. Close out Facebook. This is where our prayer came from this morning that we started with. Our prayer came from Lesson 184 in the Course of Miracles. The name of God is my inheritance. And that's the prayer we did this morning. If we go over to the blog at ValerieLove.com, I just want to let you know if you click on blog, there you get all my latest blog posts. Oh, I've got a blog in July. And oh yeah, I blog um, usually twice a month or so. Two, three times a month, I like to put up some message uh, of upliftment and inspiration. So you got tons and tons and tons of stuff here to uh, have upliftment and inspiration. I love it, love it, love it, love it. You got tons of stuff you can look through. And if you don't find what you're looking for right here, all you have to do is come over to articles. And when you click on articles, there you'll find blog posts that are arranged according to topic. That makes it a little easier. So if you're looking for a certain topic. But the gift I want to give you is the Love Revolution Prayer. And Sophie, you're back. Okay. In the search bar, put Love Revolution Prayer. Enter that. Love Revolution. And there you're going to see a, po a post that says the Love Revolution begins December 3rd. Click on that. And scroll down, and you'll see the gift at the bottom. We did a love a revolution challenge for uh, it was something like 30 days or 28 days, 28 days of love, I believe, at 12, 12 Eastern time daily for 12 minutes. It was really a powerful, powerful love revolution, and we pray this prayer every day. Here's the love revolution prayer. You can download it. That's a gift. So just see right here. Just save and just download it to your computer. Um, and enjoy it. Okay, uh, let me close out. This is the Love Revolution Prayer. Pray it every day. 
We prayed it every day at 1212, every day for 28 days. What a blast. I still remember the love revolution. It was so much fun. It was so good and so live and enlivens the love in you. So if you're having an issue with love, there's one other thing I want to give you too. I want to give you this love revolution prayer and then I also want to give you the radiant love prayer because that one will absolutely get you into radiant love. So put radiant love in the search. So easy to do this and find all these prayers and supports. Here we go. First thing that pops up, radiant love prayer. Click on that. When you click on Radiant Love Prayer, there you're going to see. I'm going to make it a little bigger for us so that you can uh, really see. There it is, Radiant Love. And this Radiant Love Prayer, I love it. It will center you in love. Once again, say it every day, every day, every day. Do 28 days or do 30 days or do 40 days. Every day at the same time. We play, pray the Love Revolution Prayer every day at the same time at 1212. And uh, when you go down, you'll also see that these prayers come from, actually this prayer, Radiant Love, uh, I believe it's in Pray, 30 Prayers from the Universal Soul, one of my lovely books on Amazon.com. So if you feel so inclined, hop on over to Amazon.com. And uh, hey, you can even look inside. This book is called Pray, 30 Prayers for the Universal Soul. That's me on the cover. Yeah, that's me. And um, when you click on you'll see that this book is full of just like some some prayers that I pray will serve you, will lift you, will really uh, give you a, a peace of mind and whatnot. So if you look here on this page, I wanted to show you the table of contents. There we have all the prayers that are in there. So we got prayers for care. We got prayers for self-care, knowing that you're cared for. Prayer, a prayer of love. We got a forgiveness prayer. That forgiveness prayer, whoo, that's a biggie. We got the abundant prosperity prayers. We got healing and health prayers. We have comfort prayers. If you have a person who passed on, we have prayers for peace. We have prayers for surrender. We have prayers for standing in the gap. These are intercessory prayers that I wrote for my family. Here is prayers of thanksgiving and praise. And here's a conclusion and uh, a prayer for Alexis, which came forward in a coaching session with a beautiful being of light. I love, love, love these prayers. So absolutely, hop on over there and pick up that book. And uh, I pray you enjoy it. Or any of the other books that you see on the right-hand side, they're all authored by moi, Valerie Love. All right, let's come off of screen share. And, uh, oh, were we on screen share? I thought we were on screen share, but <laughs> maybe we weren't. <laughs> Oh my God, were we on screen share? I think we were. Okay, at any rate, have a beautiful day. I love you. Visit me online at ValerieLove.com and make sure if you need to, you can call our office at 801-871-LOVE if there's something you're looking for specifically and you can't find it at the blog or if you want to embark on spiritual life coaching or if you want to join one of our programs, or if you're looking at our wealth club, or if you just have questions, uh, you can always reach out to me on social media or call our office at 801-871-LOVE. I do want to let you know that when you call our office, have your intention clear. Know why you're calling. Know what you're seeking. Know what it is that you require support with. And we'll be out, do our best to support you. We can't support you if you don't know what you want or what you're looking for. We've got to, you've got to know what you want, what you're looking for, and you've already looked for it, maybe at the blog, and haven't found it, then feel free to call. And uh, absolutely, if you're looking for spiritual life coaching, absolutely call and contact our office because we will have an interview with you and uh, determine if spiritual life coaching is the best direction for you to go or reading. So we'll do that. We'll get a personalized plan going for you. Come on, ascend. Let's get out of this relationship stuff. We've got relationship bliss tools that we use with our clients. We've got relationship bliss uh, coaching that we do a spiritual life coaching protocol that teaches you how to teaches you how to fight fair and set up boundaries in your relationship if you're having problems with that or holding your boundaries if you're having problems with that too. So call us. We'd be happy, happy, happy to support you. I love you. Mwah. Be blessed. Woo.